Don't get off to a bad start in 2023 by booking your cruise with a bad cruise line. In this video we're going to look back at the 10 cruise ships and 7 cruise lines we sailed with in 2022 and we're going to tell you which cruise lines you should consider and the ones that you should avoid and why. In 2022 we sailed with 7 cruise lines, Royal Caribbean, Cunard, Ambassador, p Cruises, Princess Cruises, MSC and Holland America. Out of the 10 cruise ships we have tried over the past year, it has become very apparent which cruise lines are outperforming their competitors and the ones which have been showing gradual decline in a post-2020 world. When giving our recommendations for the best and worst cruise line, we'll be weighing up our own personal experiences on board when it comes to decor, maintenance, cabins, entertainment, dining, service and value for money. We're going to start with the best cruise line, and to be honest, two cruise lines sprung to mind, Cunard and Royal Caribbean. Cunard sprung to mind because of a near faultless experience aboard Queen Victoria in October 2022. Looking back at our time on board, there were no niggles to reflect on. The decor aboard this ship ranks as one of our favourites that we have seen, cabins were sufficiently comfortable and practical, service and dining was to the standard you would expect for a premium cruise line, and we had disembarked the ship feeling as though we had received great value for money. However, we're not going to choose Cunard for two reasons. First of all, it is our view that speciality dining aboard Cunard ships is very limited when you compare to competition with other premium cruise lines like Holland America and Princess. Also, we're not a big fan of the exorbitant charging for Wi-Fi and drinks etc. Charging $18 for a cocktail is daylight robbery to a Brit and the drink package offerings are equally as poor. A premium soft drinks package is $30 per person per day and a drinks package that includes alcohol is $70 per person per day. You don't even get a drinks package thrown in if you spent thousands of pounds on a Princess or Queen's Grill suite, which in our view is pretty stingy and falls very short of the offerings by MSC Yacht Club which we had the pleasure of experiencing last year. Also, as impressed as we were with Queen Victoria, we didn't have a sublime experience on Queen Elizabeth or Queen Mary II in the autumn of 2021. Overall, our experience with both ships were mediocre at best and didn't live up to that well-established Cunard reputation people expect. Queen Victoria gave us the hope that Cunard had overcome the issues we experienced on the other two ships months earlier. However, we'll need to give them another go before we can be certain, which is why we've booked to sail aboard Queen Mary II in a Queen's Grill suite later this year. Cunard is a great cruise line, but you have to be the right type of cruiser to appreciate them. You do get more of a subdued atmosphere on board, where formality when it comes to service and dining is overriding, as are all of the traditions of ocean travel. Cunard have not followed other cruise lines in the direction of adding industry first wow factors to their ships. They've stuck to what they know, which we think works, as long as the service, dining and luxurious surroundings they promote present themselves every time you're on board one of their ships. Let's talk Royal Caribbean. We sailed with Royal Caribbean twice over the past year. Both cruises were for our big main holidays, where we sailed to the Caribbean out of New York aboard Anthem of the Seas and the Mexican Riviera out of Los Angeles aboard Navigator of the Seas for our engagement. Both experiences with Royal Caribbean were predominantly fantastic, and Anthem of the Seas in particular was our best cruise ship of 2022. So the question is, why? Royal Caribbean ships really excel in warmer climates, particularly when it comes to freedom of things to do. Royal Caribbean are one of the best, if not the best cruise lines in the industry for families and keeping people entertained all day long. You'll find industry firsts such as the North Star which provides you with 360 degree views over the ship, more than 100 metres above the sea on the Quantum class cruise ships with the company. You have surf simulators, bumper cars, incredible water slides, amusement arcades, rock climbing and ice skating to name a few. MSC have lots of things to do on board, why haven't we chose them? Well MSC have an astounding array of things to do aboard their newer and larger ships in the fleet but unfortunately a majority of them come at an extra charge whereas much of what is offered on Royal Caribbean ships is included as part of your cruise fare. But it is worth pointing out that MSC cruise fares are usually quite a bit cheaper compared to Royal Caribbean, but for us personally we would rather pay a slightly inflated cruise fare and know that we have all of these facilities available once we are on board at no extra cost. If you are keen to discover MSC cruises in more detail and find out what our first impressions were aboard MSC Virtuosa, click the banner in the top right hand corner now for our MSC Virtuosa ship review. 
Now, we hear all the time that people turn their nose up at Royal Caribbean, particularly those that enjoy cruising traditionally, grabbing a sun lounger somewhere quiet and reading a book, for example. There is no reason why you can't do this on a Royal Caribbean ship. They have plenty to offer those that seek a quieter way of cruising, whether it be their gorgeous adult-only solariums or those quiet parts of the ship people forget about. Just because a ship has a surf simulator and bumper cars doesn't mean you have to vacation like that when you're on board. You can still use the spas, solariums and adult-only sun decks as you would on your favourite cruise line, but you have the added bonus that these incredible facilities are there if you're feeling adventurous. We defy anybody to turn their nose up at the eye shows and the shows laid on in 270. They are some of the best we've experienced at sea and you'll certainly never be bored on a Royal Caribbean ship. Royal Caribbean are pretty great when it comes to food and dining too, particularly the Windjammer buffet and specialty dining options on board their ships. Main dining leaves a lot to be desired, but this is something which seems to have declined with most cruise lines as they continue to make cuts to spending to address their ever increasing debt. We're not usually a big fan of buffet restaurants, but the Windjammer and Royal Caribbean ships is fantastic. You can expect unrivaled variety and decent quality of food for a cruise line that sits in the mainstream category. Royal Caribbean ships also offer a decent range of specialty and extra charge dining options, from affordable options such as Johnny Rockets to premium and unique dining experiences like Wonderland, which serves up one of the most unique menus you are ever likely to try at sea and on land. To enhance value for money, Royal Caribbean offer fairly priced dining packages so you can pay less for the upcharge restaurants you're looking to try, so definitely look into these before your cruises rather than booking these menus individually when on board. Cabins and accommodation are generally very good aboard Royal Caribbean ships. The balcony cabin we had on Navigator of the Seas was a little tired, but it had been recarpeted during her last refit in 2019, and it was generally very clean and sufficiently practical. The balcony cabin we had on Anthem of the Seas was fantastic, very spacious, modern, adequately practical in terms of power outlets and storage, and the bathroom was a very generous size. Royal Caribbean are one of the few cruise lines which give you a shower door, which is a feature most cruise lines choose to ignore when it comes to the overwhelming preference over a shower curtain. Sweet offerings with Royal Caribbean are not the best, but they're not the worst either. But balcony cabins like the one on Anthem of the Seas were so good, we wouldn't recommend upgrading beyond this grade as it seems a little unnecessary, even if you have the money to do so. So Royal Caribbean would be our personal choice when it comes to cruising in 2023, as it offers a very broad cruising experience which can be loved by most people and it is a cruise line which excels at variety when it comes to food and dining, entertainment and things to do on board. As a cruise line, it has also presented far fewer issues and problems than other cruise lines have in a post-2020 world. Main dining was pretty poor on both Anthem and Navigator, but it was compensated by the incredible food served everywhere else on board. In our opinion, Royal Caribbean and subsidiaries of the company have fared pretty well in a post-pandemic world and have certainly done a lot better than Carnival brands, particularly when it comes to crewing. Royal Caribbean was our favourite cruise line for 2022 and is one we would recommend you try in 2023, but which one should you avoid? Three cruise lines come to mind based on our experiences in the last year. Princess, p and Ambassador. Starting with Princess Cruises, queues and being able to book specialty dining options on board Enchanted Princess were quite frankly diabolical, caused by huge staffing issues and problems with the Medallion app. However, much of everything else on board was perfect. The ship itself was immaculate, cabins and accommodations were stylish, incredibly comfortable and practical, and food and dining on board was pretty good too. While we have read reviews of people who have had a very similar experience on Enchanted Princess and other ships in the Princess fleet, we recognise many of these issues seem to be more prevalent on the larger, newer ships with the company. There seems to be far fewer issues on the smaller, older ships with the company, and they seem to be faring much better when it comes to crewing and the medallion up, which is most likely because of the reduced capacity these ships carry. Therefore, because of this, and the fact that so many other things were perfect on Enchanted Princess, this isn't a cruise line we would recommend avoiding in 2023, but we would suggest trying a smaller and older ship in the fleet, as they seem to be faring a lot better with post-2020 issues when compared to the newer and much larger ships with the company. p Cruises, what on earth has happened to the world's oldest cruise line? This company has been fraught with difficulties and challenges ever since cruising recommenced in 2021. No cruise line that we have sailed with over the past couple of years has fared worse, and the decline to a passenger's cruising experience is staggering. A majority of cruise lines have struggled with crewing since the pandemic. 
exacerbated by delays in applying for passports and gaining STCW certificates which allow crew to work at sea. No cruise line seems to be struggling quite as badly as P&O. This has been made very evident by the fact that P&O are the only cruise line which have scrapped the nightly turndown service people have come to appreciate and expect from their cabin steward. You get a morning cabin service, but in the evening stewards are reassigned to other departments to assist, most commonly in food and beverage, where crew numbers are so lacking. This has also fuelled the noticeable decline in bar service and food quality, as you now have crew performing in roles which they are unfamiliar with and haven't had the proper training you'd expect from a crew working in these departments. Crew seemed noticeably stressed and unfriendly on both Britannia and Arcadia in 2022, and the food quality on both ships has plummeted, but why? Firstly, P&O have made huge cuts to both food and beverage menus to minimise waste, cut expenditure and to improve efficiency when it comes to bartending and food preparation. Main dining menus have been cut to the bone, where around half of the options on a menu don't change, such as prawn cocktail, tomato soup and grilled salmon. You don't need to be a trained chef to pour some soup into a bowl or spoon some Mary Rose sauce onto a prawn, and it seems that P&O have had that exact same thought process when discussing ways to overcome their crewing issues. Things were so bad on Arcadia that both speciality restaurants weren't available on that particular cruise. Neither was the Neptune Grill and people couldn't get a table for two or four on Freedom Dining. If you were a party of two or four on Arcadia and you didn't want to share a table, it was go to the buffet or go hungry. That is what Freedom Dining meant on that particular cruise. While Britannia was a very clean ship and was very well maintained, the same could not be said for Arcadia. Cleaning was distinctly lacking and it was made apparent to us that they weren't even changing tablecloths between sittings in the main dining room. At the end of the cruise we did say that we wouldn't cruise with P&O again but that anger did subside and we have decided to give P&O one last try in February of this year aboard Ventura. But based on our own experiences on both ships in 2022 it seems that crewing issues and problems booking speciality restaurants is here to stay for a while to come as it seems prevalent on both the older and newer ships with the company. The high volume of negative reviews about P&O cruises on online review sites such as Cruise Critic is damning. And therefore, this is a cruise line we would recommend avoiding if you're seeking a perfect cruise experience rather than a quick getaway on a budget. We booked Ventura for February purely because it was around £200 each. If it had been any more, we wouldn't have booked it because we no longer have great confidence in this cruise line. Ambassador Cruise Lines, we're not big fans. Based on personal experience, we can only speak about our time on board for one night at a renaming ceremony back in April of last year. They do say that first impressions are everything, and we have to say Ambience and Ambassador left a very sour taste in our mouths. Speaking as somebody that has worked on commercial ships, I know how important health and safety is in this industry. It's paramount. So when we saw the condition of Ambience when she was due to depart on her maiden voyage, it said a lot about the cruise line itself. Now obviously, the decks on Ambience don't look like this now, but in that condition, they shouldn't have allowed passengers on board at all, and the ship shouldn't have been allowed to sail until she was fully ready for paying guests. A few weeks later, Ambience failed a port state control inspection where 20 deficiencies were identified, two of which were deemed so severe that the ship was detained in the port of Tilbury until they were rectified. Failing a port state control inspection does happen from time to time, but they are generally very rare, particularly on cruise ships. So for a ship to fail two inspections in the first seven months of operation would be quite unprecedented. On the 18th of December 2022, Ambience and Ambassador hit the news. A cruise had been cancelled just hours after passengers had embarked, unpacked and settled in because she had failed a passenger ship safety certificate inspection because of a deficiency with a lifeboat davit. These types of failures are pretty much unheard of, especially to disembark passengers in the manner that they did, and it says a lot about the cruise line that this deficiency wasn't identified in time, so that it could have been rectified before the inspection. Speaking as somebody that has worked on a ship building up to a PSSC inspection, I know what a big job it is and how vital it is for a ship to pass it. If a ship hasn't been given a renewal certificate, it cannot sail with passengers on board, and that is exactly what happened to Ambience last year. 
Having seen the state of the decks at Ambience's renaming ceremony, this news did not surprise me, and we have no reason to be confident that this sort of thing isn't going to happen again in the future. Many of the issues which feature in reviews of Ambience all seem to revolve around the same things, dated and tired decor, broken appliances, faulty air conditioning, dodgy plumbing and a failure to deal with problems as they arise. The biggest overriding issue for Ambassador is the fact that they have an old ship. Ambience is a ship that is more than 31 years of age, she had sat around for nearly two years during the pandemic off of the coast of Panama corroding and was only destined for scrap until Ambassador put in a bid at the last hour. Ambassador took on a ship without fully understanding the maintenance and mechanical challenges which would daunt them. They have done the bare minimum to this ship, you can see that from the cabins and the fact that the venues are identical to when it was owned by P&O Australia. This is a cruise line that has been set up on the cheap and with another old cruise ship on the way in 2023 and with a maiden voyage already postponed, we can't imagine that the difficulties and problems faced by this cruise line are going to be unique to 2022. People need to have confidence that their cruise is going to go ahead as planned and that a new cruise line is going to be able to match the basic comforts and offerings provided by long established competition. Confidence in Ambassador has been well and truly depleted over the last year and it is a cruise line we strongly recommend you avoid until they at least demonstrate that they know what the hell they're doing. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future cruise content. Let us know what your favourite cruise line is and what you have booked for 2023. We'll see you next time. And lastly, a big thank you to our Patreons. Because of you, we can continue doing what we love with your extra support. If you would like to find out more about becoming a patron, click the link in the description below. In return you will get extra benefits such as early access to our videos, behind the scenes sneak peeks, zoom calls, Christmas and birthday gifts and much much more.